And how long you been out here on the streets? Since 1987. Wait, 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 wait. You've been homeless since 1987? 1987. Off and on or straight? Off and on. What's up, guys? Welcome to Philadelphia and welcome to another video bringing you the real life stories of those that are dealing with homelessness and living on the street. Today, I bring you the story of Julius. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Rico the Trainer. And I'm down here in Old City, Philadelphia, and today I'm with Julius Smith. Julius Smith, man, how you feeling today? Uh, better than some, worse than others. Right, I can imagine some days better than others. You're currently living on the streets, correct? Yes. And this is the area that you pretty much sleep and do everything. Yes. And how long you been out here on the streets? Since 1987. Wait, 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 wait. You've been homeless since 1987? 1987. Off and on or straight? Off and on. Okay, damn, that's a long time, man. So what's the reason that you've been homeless all them years? Because I have no family out here. I'm originally born and raised in Flint, Michigan. But I came to Pennsylvania because my mother has a house out here. But I've been trying to re relocate with her. And I got the house and everything, but I got to sleep out here because they can't relinquish the house to me because they're going through an arbitration. I have no family, nobody. Okay, Only so... the people that I know out here on the street that I call my family. Okay, so within all those years, you've never tried to use the resources that Philadelphia has? Uh, yes, I have. I tried to use the resources, but I went to the shelter a couple times, but each time I go to a shelter, you got people that want to steal, rob, you know, and take advantage of you because you're there. Okay. And you don't know none of them, but they try to take advantage of you. But I'm not going to have that, but I do me, and I try to do me and do me in the prosperous way. Okay. I don't bother anybody. I leave, leave well enough alone. I just do what I have to do for me. Okay, cool. So one of the things that, you know, the people from outreach and things like that, they, they tend to say that anybody that's been on the streets, you know, for a number of years is because they want to be out here. Do you feel like you chose to be out here? No, I do not choose to be out here because, uh, I was in um I was in uh Columbus Property Management. I had an apartment, but somebody broke in the apartment because I was in Frankfurt. Somebody broke in the apartment. They took everything I had, and uh I had to leave because um people was in the house that wasn't me, okay. and they want to know how the people got in. I was like, good question. I would like to know how to get in here also. But see, it's not my fault, but it's, you know, it's, it's, I think it's the system. But uh, I got God on my side. Absolutely. You know, and God's going to look out for me. He look out for his children. He's going to make sure that I'm all right. And uh, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to let nothing, nothing distort me or nothing dis, dis, you know, dis, disinvolve me. I'm going to keep moving and keep moving forward and keep my head up. Okay. And so has drugs or alcohol played a part in you being out here? No, I wouldn't say that because I don't drug. I do drink. Okay. But I drink moderately. Okay. And I don't drink heavy. I don't drink to get drunk. I just drink, you know, to solve, solve you know, I call it solving my problem because it helped me get my wheels on turning, help me keep thinking. And then I know what I got to do after that. But okay. It's always going to get greater later as long as you keep your mind on the positive. Absolutely. So um, do you know or feel like you have any mental health issues? No, I don't have any mental health. No, I don't have any mental health issues. I do have seizures. Okay. I do have seizures. And I have, look, I have a bracelet to prove it. I have seizures. Okay. And uh, I know how to take care of myself. I shower and wash every day. I have to. Okay. Hygiene is mandatory. 
Mm-hmm. Just because you're homeless don't mean you got to act and smell like you're homeless. Absolutely. And I listen, I appreciate everything that happens to me. Everything, everything that I get, I appreciate it. I don't bother nobody. I don't bother nobody. If I see somebody in dire need or dire distress, I will help them. Absolutely. Even though I have nothing, I will help them. That's a good spirit to have, man. Okay, so you said 1987. So yes. take me back. How did you first become homeless? I lost my mother and father in a car accident. Okay. I lost my mother and father at the same time in a car accident because I'm an only sibling. Okay. I lost them. When I lost them, I lost everything. I had to come from Flint, Michigan to come out because I was living with my grandmother. In Michigan? Yes. Okay. And uh, I came back to Philadelphia to lay my mother and father to rest. And when I laid them to rest, I choose to stay here so I get her house. But now they're going through arbitration. I can't get the house because I'm the only sibling. And uh, they're going through arbitration. But once the arbitration is done, I may be able to get it. Even though I've been out here since 1987, but I didn't get the house till 1999. But... That's neither here or there. But I say that to say this. It will get greater later. As long as you keep God in your heart, your spirits above, and keep doing what you got to do for you. How is the treatment here? The treatment here is, I would say, is, is fair because don't nobody want to do nothing for nobody that ain't doing nothing for themselves. Absolutely. That's a fact. And that's one of the things I try to touch on. I try to encourage people, you know, to try to do things for themselves because that will further help somebody to want to do something for you. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so have you ever tried to, you know, get like a job through this, through the system? Yes, yes I have. Yes, I have. How's yes, that I worked have. out? It worked out for, you know, for a little while, mediocre because, um, being as though that, uh, I'm a, uh, you know, I'm a homeless. I have no, 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 no education, but I did graduate high school. Okay. But I have, you know, no, no college education. And, you know, everybody needs a degree these days to get these jobs. Because they're not, listen, they're not offering nobody anything. But you can get a, a restaurant job, wash, I will wash dishes, mop floors, clean bathrooms, do anything I have to do to take care of me. But don't nobody want to hire nobody. Okay, and you said you you have been in the shelter before, right? Yes. yes. And yes. what was your experience in the shelter? Oh, my experience in the shelter was I stayed there for two weeks in our brother's place. That's at Knife and Hamilton. Okay. And I stayed there for two weeks. The second week I was there, I went out, sat outside to smoke a cigarette. I came back in, everything that I owned was gone. Mm. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't pinpoint nobody who did it. Okay. But uh, I let the security and and the, uh, the staff know that my things was missing, and uh, I never did anything wrong to nobody in there. Why would somebody come and take mine? Mm. And the security, they promised to get it back, and this, that, and the other. But I never heard no answer, nothing. So I left. Yeah. But then I went to another shelter, Six Haven Bainbridge. I went to the shelter down there. I stayed there for six months. That was lovely. It was lovely because whenever I would come in, I would come in with food. I would share with everybody. But then they started getting rowdy, and then, and then they started, you know, it was a, it was a, a brawl in there. So I had to leave because I don't want no trouble. I don't want to be, be involved in nothing that's not... You know what I'm saying it's sufficient for me. That's going to benefit me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be involved in it, so I left, and here I am, and I've been here ever since. No, listen, I've been out here since man, too long, too okay. long. But I know how to take care of me. As long as I stay stay above water, as you know, stop you know the riff raff and all that, then I'm I'm good. I'm no. good because I know I'm I'm going to get mine. I'm right. going to get mine. Because God got my back. Absolutely. Got to keep God first.
So when's the last time you've been in a home? Or a house or apartment the or last apartment. time I've been in an apartment was like six months ago. Okay. And the only reason I lost that because they was trying to build it, they was trying to they was gonna knock the building down and turn it into condos. Okay. So I had to leave. Not because, you know, I, I wanted to or something I did wrong, but I had to. But gotcha. they gave me my security deposit back and everything and uh, and I came out here. Now I have nothing or nobody. But uh, I know how to maintain. Okay. Now, notice how much love you get, you know, from, you know, some of the people that's around here. And, you know, that, that says a lot about you. You must be doing some good, you know, as you're out here. And so um, my next question was going to be, you know, how do you go about eating and things like that? And... You know, uh, get how food. I go eating is this. I, I ask the person, listen, I don't listen, sir or ma'am, I don't want any money from you. Can you find in your heart to help me get something to eat? Please, God will bless you. It will humbly be appreciated. And they will gladly take you to be, buy you something to eat. And that's how I eat. Okay. I eat I, I, and I eat lovely. I eat lovely. I don't bother nobody. And I make sure they're all right. Because they'll, listen, they con constantly come back and forth past here where I stay at, past here, and they see me, and uh, they will bless me, tell me something to eat, or they'll give me a couple of dollars, and I have to get my own. But that doesn't make me who I am. It makes me, it makes me stronger because if I got people on my side, it'll always get greater later. Okay. All right, so... You know, some people might say, okay, well, you know, because people are looking out for you and, you know, people are willing to give you stuff, they might look at that and say that you're content with being out here because, you know, people are just going to give you stuff. H how do you feel about that? Like, what would you say about that? What I would say about that is that, that that's fabricated because it's not always like that. People say what they want to say because... They can be, they, I tell them, I tell people constantly, this could be you. This could be you. You know, you only a paycheck away from being where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? And then what you do is how you do it. You know, as long as you don't bother nobody, be content and stay positive, people will bless you. Absolutely. What you put out into the universe is what you'll get back. Exactly. That's a fact. All right, and for anybody that may see this or to the public, what would you like them to know about you or your situation? Like, what would you like to tell the people? What I would like to tell you people is this. Be positive, stay strong, keep your head up, and do what you have to do for you. It ain't what you do, it's how you do it. Say what's true to your heart. Not what, what you want somebody to hear, Tell them what's real. Absolutely. What do you think is needed to change your situation or give you the life that you, you want to live? More, 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 more housing. More housing. All these build, buildings around here that mm -hmm. need to be that, that y'all tearing down, please build them up and put them into use because they can go to the homeless and be, be and, and shelter some people that really need it because you got men women and children out here doing the same thing that's that's a fact there's uh all kind of demographics out here um you know and like i said some they might say well they want to be out here or you know they don't want to use the resources or they don't want to you know do what it takes to make the situation better you know I'm just trying to find a fine line between what I know from, you know, from the people and what I know from the resources that's available. So you're just trying to figure it out. What I would say about that situation is that, listen, if people choose to be out here, that's because they choose to be out here. They don't want nothing in life. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Life is better than that. Everybody has a choice to make. If you choose to be out here, then... 
may God be with you. If you want something in life, man, life goes on. And just keep yourself, keep yourself moving. Keep yourself positive. Stay out of the, stay out of the limelight and get yourself back together. Because you can do it because you did it before. Okay. And if you was given a home today, what would you do? What I would do is I would, I would maintain that house. I would find me a job anywhere doing anything to keep myself supported. Because being out here, you don't, man, being out here is nowhere to be. Being out here in the street is nowhere to be. Because, man, people will hurt you, rob you, steal you, hit you, do whatever they want to do, spit on you, whatever they want to do to you, if you allow it. But you ain't got to allow it because you, you're bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. Okay, speaking of that, what's the craziest experience you had out here? The craziest experience I had out here was when I was attacked up in Love Park for sleeping on the bench by six other dudes jump up and grab me because I had on I had on some a fresh pair of sneakers. Had on that. They said, oh man, I like them sneakers. Can I wear them? I said, no, I don't fit you. You don't fit my size. And uh, they jumped on me, grabbed me, threw me down, took my, took my sneaks mm. and beat me. Wow. I woke up in the hospital. I woke up in Jefferson Hospital for six days. That's crazy. What advice would you give to anybody so they won't get in a situation like this? What, I would, what advice I would give you is this. Maintain, keep yourself together, stay with your family until you get your own. Talk to your family because they're the only ones you can talk to. You don't have no friends. Your friends are your enemies because they're trying to get what you got. Leave it alone. Do what you got to do for you. Self-preservation is the first rule of nature. Mm. Okay. And um, one more thing. I know you see a lot of different people out here. Um, you know, being in Old City, there's so many different people. So how does the people, because some of the people are not even from here. So overall... How do you feel like the people treat, you know, you being a vet, a homeless vet out here, how do you feel like the people treat the people out here overall? I think majority of the people, they treat you right. They treat you right down here because conversation has never been offending. You know, it ain't what you do or how you do it. It's what you say out your mouth. Don't disrespect nobody. Stay in your own lane, and you will get blessed. Absolutely. And how, how, how does it make you feel when somebody do stop and talk to you or, you know, is willing to have a conversation with you? It makes me feel good. It makes me feel that somebody is actually listening. Okay. It feels very good because uh, strangers come up and ask me, oh, how are you doing? They want to shake my hand. And they sit and they want to sit and talk to me. They will sit down next to me and talk to me. Then bless me. We, we had hours of conversations out here on this step. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I say that to say this. Everybody is not a bad person. Absolutely. Um, that's one of the things I try to tell people, man, the importance of, you know, just having a conversation with the people, letting them know that, you know, we care. And that's important, man. And that's one of the things I want people to know and understand that, you know, just sitting or stopping and talking and checking on somebody means a lot to you guys. And, yes, sir. you know, that's what I want people to know, man. Yes, so sir. thanks, Jewel, man, for you sharing your story. Welcome. You are more than Thanks welcome. for your time. I appreciate you. And, you know, we're going to continue to build. And, um, you know, like you said, keep God first and keep doing what you do, man. That's right. And I humbly appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And that's real.